live from the Moscone Center, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit San Francisco 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. We're back, I'm Stu Miniman, and we're here with theCUBE's exclusive coverage of AWS Summit San Francisco here in the Moscone Center West. Happy to welcome to the program two gentlemen from Dynatrace. Uh, we've got Andy Grabner, who's a DevOps specialist, and Dave Anderson, Vice President of Marketing. Gentlemen, thanks right. so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right, so, so Dave, we'll start, since you, you've got the marketing title, give us a little bit, you know, your role there, and for, for our audience that might not be familiar with Dynatrace, I'm sure everybody knows them, uh, but, but give us a little bit of the background. So, yeah, essentially what Dynatrace does is the world needs software to work perfectly. What we do is we help customers build and manage their software in their cloud environments on premise to help deliver a fantastic customer experiences because we know that it all needs to work. Mm -hmm. We've been in the market for uh, the Magic Quadrant Leader for the last eight years in the APM space, but we're expanding out beyond that now as the customer demands. Excellent, well, one of my favorite lines you see you make software works is they said hardware will, will eventually fail, fail and software will eventually work. Um, so uh, uh, Andy, you, you've given a session here at the show. Tell us what, what your role is at Dynatrace. What, what, what are you doing here at the show? Yeah. So I've been with the company for 10 years and I've been through a similar transformation that I believe most of the people here want to go through from quote unquote old fashioned on-premise legacy monolithic applications to using containers, microservices, and eventually serverless. So my session was all about fearless from monolith to serverless. Yeah. I gave them some ideas on how, what we went through how we as a company transformed, but also how our product transformed from before we did on-premise monitoring built for the monolithic apps, and now we basically do full cloud scale in the cloud, but still covering all the enterprise technology, because everybody that wants to build the cool new stuff that they are selling here, they still have, you still have legacy applications that you integrate with and still carry around. So it's all about enterprise cloud technology that we want to that we cover. Yeah. So, so Dave, I, I hear all this. I'm sure Dynatrace has more than 10 years of serverless and 12-factor authentication experience, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you know, you, you're, the, you're the hipster, you know, <laughs> uh, cloud-native company. You were doing all of it before any of us knew about it. Tell us a little bit, did, kind of historically, you know, how did kind of Dynatrace kind of start before and move into uh, you know this space? Yeah. So um, you know, we're, we've been in the space for around 10 years. Um, we've been a leader in the space, but you know, what we really did four or five years ago is we predicted on the future we were going to have serverless environments, we're going to have microservices, customers are going to have multiple cloud environments, they're going to need that software to work, and they're going to need automation. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took our 50 best engineers and we said, go and reinvent the future. And that's exactly what they've done. Our CTO has a vision, fully automated IT, so our whole product philosophy is around making it really simple for our customers to be able to see it within this really complex digital environment exactly what's going on, how is the software performing, how are the users adopting it, and how do we roll out better features and better functions mm -hmm. to the customer base. All right, I love the reInvent pun, but this is the summit, yes, reInvent so cool. in, in November. Andy, uh, we, we were talking to Sandy Carter uh, in the last segment, talking about customers. And you know, customers have so many applications that it's great to say this is the future in serverless and you know, microarchitecture is distributed, is great and everything, but some of your stuff's going to be lift and shift. Some of the stuff's probably got to stay where it is for a while. Right. How do customers manage that portfolio and you know, a few years ago it was like, oh, we're going to do a bimodal world. We were not you know, on board with that, right. but it's, there's a spectrum and there's lots of applications and it's really complicated. Yeah. So what's the advice, how do you help customers well, you know, kind of squint through that and work through that? Yeah. So I think essentially people want to update the critical apps to be more innovative, they want to go and invest in a new enterprise cloud stack, I would say, right? Um, so we basically help them, first of all, figure out which of the applications that they have right now are easier to migrate, whether it's lift and shift or re-platform, because we actually give them full visibility into their current stack tell them where are their most dependent and least dependent services, which ones are easier to extract and harder to extract depending on the dependencies and the traffic that goes over and the criticality. So we help them first of all figure out their cloud migration plan, what to migrate first. We call about, we talked about uh, t-shirt sizing, your migration, small, medium, and large. And then not only do we help them to migrate things over, but to break the big monoliths apart or, or put stuff on top of it, right? So this is also happening. So we really help them to figure out which application, which service to tackle first, to migrate over. We do it in a safe way because we not only help them to later on monitor their new system, but we help them along the way. So we talked about DevOps earlier when we had our little prep call. right? We actually think that monitoring 
in the space we are is not just something to keep the lights on in production, but it's something that has to be injected along the delivery pipeline. That's why we are part of your development process. We are part of your CI CD. When a code change goes in, an architectural change goes in, when you move over, we monitor all these changes and we give you early warning signals that this change is going to be a good one or not a good one. And that's what we that's what we solve. Yeah, well, well, so much things in the cloud world, it's never a one-time thing. It's got to be an ongoing process, it's iterative. Exactly. And if I if I hear right though, you know, you're not just only in AWS, it's my on-premises stuff, uh, multi-cloud, you play with all of those yep, exactly. uh, environments? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I mean you name it. Yeah. Not sure if I'm allowed to name all the other vendors in the space here at AWS. We're, look, we're <laughs> independent media, we cover all of those there shows, and I think your customers are using all them. Exactly. So you could say they're all in on AWS, but they might also use GCP and Azure and other I mean, stuff. I mean the stats yeah. for like yeah. it's like 98 or 90% of customers are, are hybrid enterprise multi-cloud. Yeah. And that's why we designed the product to be able to do just that. They're going to have applications running in the cloud that are making calls back to things on premise. Yeah. You want to be able to see that entire delivery chain. So absolutely we provide that single visibility across all of their cloud environments and on premise. Mm. Yeah, um, what are you seeing as some of the biggest challenges your customers are facing, Dave? The sheer, the complexity, like yeah. the, the pressures which they face, which is they got to shift to the cloud faster, they got their CEO going, we need to provide a better digital experience. They're going to build out these new cloud platforms. They need they're just struggling for time to deploy these things. They need to move faster. There's threats of competition, all the buzzwords that come, but they're all real for, mm -hmm. for IT people. And then all we're doing is giving them that visibility because this, the, the environments have become so complex, microservice, serverless, multi-cloud, on-premise, and just to be able to, to, to help them challenge the visibility into where is everything, how is it performing, is it working, and then give them the confidence to release faster as Andy talks about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so Andy, one of the things that people look at sometimes is, you know, okay, it's a multi-cloud environment, but, you know, okay, if I go down the container environment, can I do that multi-cloud? If I go down the path and say something like Fargate, that's only uh, with Amazon. So, are your customers concerned about that? How deep down do they go up the, uh, I should say, how far up the stack are they willing to go with Amazon, or are, are they holding back and trying to use services that are more, uh, you know, e easily to be, be able to get migrated if need be? I want to give you two, two answers to this. Yeah. First of all, the developers don't care. Okay. I don't care where it runs. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand, I've got a software long. development team, exactly. when they port it over to AWS, they're like, auto scaling's awesome, it's great, I don't want to have to port somewhere else, and if it works, exactly. it goes back, I go back to, you know, it was like standards and proprietary versus that. If you solve my business need, I'm needed. So, I agree, but, what's your other answer? Yeah, so, <laughs> but it is clear that, you know, people, what we hear at least, what I hear, people want to figure out how can they define their next platform and make sure that at least they're not doing a complete vendor lock-in, a cloud lock-in, so they definitely think and invest in how can we deliver something, a platform to our developers, so that they can just worry about writing code, and we make sure that if we decide Amazon today, maybe something else later, it's not going to be too hard. And so I think we see that people try. I think still a lot of people are in the early stages, so they start primarily with one vendor, with one platform, with one technology, but they always make sure that they keep their their options open to eventually move over and they're constantly look out. That's why they're constantly bringing in new technology, which is also a challenge for every vendor that is here on the floor to make sure we're coping with this technology disruption that is constantly happening. Not only for the users, the consumers of the technology, but also for us as vendors. And I think that's what we try to keep up with, yeah? Yeah, uh, so how are we doing as an industry and how are customers doing it, keeping up with all this change? It is, uh, I think, you know, constant education, constantly looking what's new, uh, we, as Dave mentioned, we internally a couple of years ago figured out something new is coming. So we actually broke out our own team, our innovation team that figured out what's the next big thing. I think we see this also with our customers. You constantly have to disrupt yourself. You constantly have to redefine yourself. And that's what we did with monitoring. We redefined monitoring because we saw five years ago that a new wave of technology is coming. And we don't stop now. Right? We keep innovating and everybody else is doing it as well. You always have to keep up. With, with what's coming and experiment and figure out what makes sense for you and what maybe does not make sense for you. You don't we have do, to be part of every hype. And we do that in two ways. We sort of do that also in that 
a lot of the features that we put into the product actually come from our customer base. So we have a really strong connection with our customers. We listen to the customers and we mm -hmm. say, what do you need? What challenges are you suffering? What would you like to have? And then we build them into our product roadmap. So it's kind of a hybrid model of making sure you're able to listen to the customer and take their needs in, but also sometimes they don't know what's coming. So we'd work with an AWS to understand what, what they're building out and other technology partners to make sure that you know, our product is, is future-proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you built that, that innovation team and everything, is it serverless underneath now uh, for some it's, of your products? It's, it's a set of, of technologies, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all of what you basically see here on the floor and others. I think the nice thing, what I heard actually today on the floor, is that you, talk, you, do, you do not only talk about DevOps and CI, CD and innovation, you actually live it. Because, and, and what they mean with this, and he said, if I look at your at how often Dynatrace produces new features, we deploy new feature releases twice a month, we deploy daily new updates. And then they said, if you look at other vendors in the space, they also claim to be living what they expect from you, but they deploy twice a year still, or maybe you know, every other month. Mm -hmm. So I think we redefined monitoring, but also redefined and live what we actually expect our customers to do. Yeah, if, if you say you're a DevOps company, you better be embracing CI, exactly. CD, yeah. and you know, right. okay, you, you know, publish now and often. Exactly. Uh, all right, Andy and Dave, thank you so much for giving us the updates. Congrats on, on the progress. We look forward to catching you up more in the future. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from AWS Summit San Francisco. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE.